<laughs> oh, hey. Wow. This looks like a real professional studio. Really does. See, this might be the best backdrop I've ever had. I mean, yeah, it looks nice when we're outside or I'm downtown Naperville or... Uh, hello, RJ. Check out my fancy backdrop. I feel like a professional content creator. <laughs> RJ gives the highest rating on this one. Means we can't get any better. We cannot do more. We've got plants. <laughs> our whole house looks just like this. I can't tell you how much our whole house looks just like this perfectly put together. Not a not a lampshade askew, not a wire or a, a pull cord hanging down from a drapes, not <laughs> files of kids' toys, not leaves running all over. Some piles of laundry here and there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, I hope I have everything set up right. I'm not sure I do, but I am dual streaming. Good morning, Sandra Lynn. Sometimes I wish I could just start drinking uh, my coffee and not have to do the whole thing. I wonder if that would really throw off my whole thing. <laughs> I just was sitting here slurping coffee. I didn't really worry about talking to you guys or saying anything valuable or entertaining in any way. Because I don't know if I'm saying anything valuable or entertaining in any way anyway. RJ wants to know how much candy y'all got. I was thinking about you during the night, RJ. I was wondering how Power Rangers was last night. Uh, I would say we got a healthy amount of candy. Uh, we, I'll talk about that in a bit. I'll talk about that in a bit. So maybe, maybe I will, unless I forget. But your job is to remind me about it later. Hello, Mark Graham Gran. Hello, anybody else that I missed that's joining? I've been kind of chatting. Kind of loving the backdrop. Kind of feeling like I've got a comfortable chair even. Uh, hello, Joseph. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining Not Original. Thank you, uh, I don't know, all for joining. But good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning to you. My name is Ken Tracy, and this is Coffee with Ken. Uh, it is Wednesday morning. More importantly than it being Wednesday morning, more important than it being Wednesday morning is that it's November 1st. And we'll touch on that in a moment, but it's somebody very special's birthday out there. It's somebody very special's birthday out there. But we'll talk about that in a moment. So it's Wednesday morning, it's November 1st. It's about 8.05 a.m., Happy Wednesday. Uh, this is a show I've been doing for a while. This is a show about me talking, a show about me uh, sharing some ups and downs, kind of sharing some experiences, uh, sharing some feelings, sharing a little bit about life. For those that have been watching a while, for those that have been watching a while, you know, you know. I hope this is filled. Oh, yeah. Oh, I got such a nice little setup here. I got such a nice, I got the best key grip in the business. The best key grip in the business. Uh, she does all the hard work behind the scenes. I get to get all the glory that is talking in front of the camera. Uh, I can't tell you the chaos that is going on in our house moments before I push live on uh, my phone. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you, Josh Agrand, and I appreciate you being the first like and commenter this morning. But again, I can't tell you the chaos that is our lives moments before I push live. And uh, uh, we've got, I live in a household with five kids, two are babies, three are school age, all go trick or treating or cause chaos in some way. All are messy children. Uh, and we're shuffling them all out the door as uh, uh, we are uh, 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 preparing 
And there's more to it. I used to do this show, and it was really a stripped-down version of this show, and I've been doing it a long, long time. I started doing it four and a half years ago. I was living in a dark apartment. I was talking about the struggles and challenges I was facing in that dark apartment as a man that was missing his, the woman of his dreams, his dog, his stepkids, his house, his patio, his life, and was cast off to a dark apartment. And I was new talking about my issues made me feel a little bit better. And for some reason, I started doing it live on Facebook. And I think people started watching and started appreciating it and enjoying uh, seeing a guy who generally has a big smile and seems like he's got a lot going on in life uh, talking about his, some of his struggles. And I built up a nice audience and I've hopped around different platforms. And here I am going live on uh, YouTube and TikTok simultaneously. Uh, just about four and a half years later. And it's an important show to me and a show that kind of makes me feel pretty good, makes me feel kind of funny inside. But anyway, for those that have been watching a while, <laughs> you know. I know what I was going to say. I was going to talk about how it used to be a stripped down show. It was me, my phone, and anything I could do uh, to lean the phone against. And as I say, it was a dark apartment. I really struggled with the lighting. And I had one lamp in the corner, and there wasn't much light coming through the windows. And, you know, I, it looked like it was a dark haze you were uh, watching me through. And now I have such fancy equipment. I almost am on a stage with a beautiful black backdrop. Lots of plants. Anyone looking to buy any plants? We've got a lot of house plants. I... Uh, live with a woman who is uh, very solid. Hey there, RJ. Very, very solid at, uh, what did she say? Something a gating, promulgating. I don't know. I think it means making more plants out of plants. And we got a lot of plants in the house. <laughs> Let me tell you, a lot of plants. Good morning, good vibes. I appreciate all the coffee. Uh, Shannon, oh, Shannon, you are propagating. Shannon, you are, did you read that? Propagation. All right, we got a bunch of people that know. But yeah, she does a great job with plants. And I tell you what, they are coming out the seams. They're bursting out the doors. This is a nice, pretty display of plants. And she does a great job. Uh, and uh, yeah, she does a great job. <laughs> but they keep, <laughs> they keep uh, being plants. We're going to be the healthiest people with all this naturally purified, oxygenated air <laughs> coming out of plants. What's it called? Photosynthesis? Do you guys remember what photo? Hey, I haven't done a word, in the, a word of the day in a while. The word of the day is photosynthesis. And I believe it is the process of plants taking sunlight and carbon dioxide, which we animals and humans breathe, uh, and turning it into food or energy for them and sending out uh, oxygen to the world. And uh, because of that, the world continues to go and plants and animals live in harmony. And my room, my home is filled with healthy oxygenated uh, plants. Abby's dad, welcome to the show. I'm so appreciative of you joining. He's my, he's fast approaching. I, for a long time, would do this show. And I had a lot of competition for who my favorite viewer was. I don't really have a few favorite viewer. I mean, I got some, some I like a little more than others. But uh, for a while, RJ and Jack were going head to head. And we had a couple other people hop on sh uh, for periods. Everlasting Bloom's been great. Uh, Julie Flanagan, obviously Tara Jacobs. Uh, but suddenly Abby's dad is working his way up the list. Abby's dad, who kind of, I watch a lot of Sesame Street, and I don't know who this Abby is, but Abby's dad reminds me of Oscar the Grouch on Sesame Street. And for those that haven't seen uh, Oscar the Gr or Sesame Street in some time, Oscar the Grouch... <laughs> Is one of the is a green monster, and he's got messy hair, and he's complaining all the time, and he lives in a garbage can, and he doesn't like any happiness or joy, and that's what I'm picturing Abby's dad to look like. 
Daddy's dad says the only difference is he doesn't live in a garbage can. So I don't know. But anyway, I appreciate you joining Abby's dad. Put your head down and go to sleep. For those that have been watching a while, you know it is not just a show about me talking. It is also a show about me sharing my love of coffee. RJ wants to know what the coffee is over on YouTube. RJ is always very anxious to find out the ins and outs of the house. We had a nice hot pot of peppermint mocha made first thing uh, this morning and uh, drank all of that. Our uh, family are good coffee drinkers and can put it down, uh, led by my fine example of over coffee consumption. Uh, and I'll tell you what, it is not peppermint mocha. We switched up, or we, I switched up the flavors and... Uh, uh, I'm so excited to take my first sip on this November 1st morning. I hope wherever you are, uh, whatever you're doing, uh, you have a hot cup of coffee in front of you as well. Cheers to us. Oh, <laughs> I'll tell you what. I enjoyed my peppermint mocha this morning, but I just brewed up a pot of the uh, pumpkin spice Starbucks. Because I realized that although Halloween was past and I drank a lot of pumpkin spice yesterday and I wanted to mix it up a little bit today, uh, that it's still tis the season for pumpkin spice. We got pumpkin pies coming for Thanksgiving and I think pumpkin pie is more than a fall um, pie. <laughs> Therefore, the pumpkin spice coffee is more than a fall uh, coffee. So let's have another sip. It is so good. Mm. Oh. Yeah, again, the mochas that Starbucks puts out, even the peppermint mocha, are very subtle flavored coffees where the uh, pumpkin spice has a big flavor. Uh, a big flavor. And uh, you know what you're drinking when you're drinking and it feels good. Sandra Lynn said we already bought Costco pumpkin pie. I assume they come out like the size of a trash can lid, right? <laughs> Abby's dad. Because uh, Costco does everything big. They're like, they should be based out of Texas because, uh, I don't know, bigger is better at Costco and at Texas. And that sounds delicious. Uh, I was talking with my family the other day and my uh, son, William, uh, was saying how much he likes whipped cream on his pumpkin pie. And I was saying, oh yeah, who doesn't like whipped cream on, her, on their pie? And that's when my wife hopped in and said, I actually don't like whipped cream on, cream on my pie. And I'm still, I don't know, two, three days later. I haven't ever addressed her with it. And I'm trying to let things just kind of fall off and not absorb other people's issues. But I, I mean, two, three days later, trying to understand how somebody wouldn't want whipped cream on their pumpkin pie as if it makes it worse. I mean, whipped cream is one of the best inventions ever. It's so light. I guess uh, RJ wants to, is wondering if whipped cream is naughty or not. I guess it matters what you're doing with the whipped cream, RJ. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Everlasting Bloom says the whipped cream desecrates the perfect pumpkin pie. No, 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 no. Because what you get to do is you get to take your fork or your spoon, because you can use either a fork or a spoon when eating the pie. Uh, hi, Robert Patrick. Uh, and you can take a little whipped cream and mm, kind of just dissolves. Then you scoop a little of the cold. I like my pumpkin pie cold. I prefer it cold the next morning. Kennedy says she's with Bloom on this one. What? There's a movement. Shannon agrees. No whipped cream for me either. There's a whole movement against me. I think you guys are just saying that because you know it's a special day for one everlasting Bloom. Good morning, Robert Montgomery. Oh, is it a special day for one everlasting bloom? I was thinking about it over the last couple days. My birthday is August 7th. I think it's a perfect time for a birthday. It's late summer. All my friends could come over. There was no school that I would have to go to ever. 
but having a birthday. And uh, my stepdaughter, I strangely, was born on Christmas Day. And I think that might be kind of a bummer. I've heard, talked to other people that were born on Christmas Day. I believe Tiger Woods was born on Christmas Day. Uh, and I think that might be kind of a bummer. And uh, before I go further, Everlasting Bloom, a.k.a. Anne-Marie, a.k.a. my wife, uh, it's birthday today. And uh, it's November 1st. It's the day after Halloween, and I got down first this morning, and I'm looking all over the house going, hey, how can I make this morning special for my wife? Because it's her birthday. And I go, there's no way. There's no way. We had, there was leaves and candy wrappers and masks and socks and books, and it was chaos. And I did about a, really half ass effort to clean up the house to try and make my wife feel all warm and fuzzy on her birthday, but there was just no way. There was just no way. And it would be hard, I think, having a birthday on November 1st, the day after Halloween, because Halloween's a pretty big celebration, and especially, hello, baby official over there on YouTube. Uh, especially uh, uh, with five kids as we do in the house and the the, the the activity that surrounds Halloween and the decorations and the pumpkins and the costumes and the candy and the wrappers and the trick-or-treat and all that goes into it. But alas, not only is it her birthday, not only is it my wife, Everlast <coughs> Everlasting Bloom and Anne-Marie's birthday today, it's a big birthday. I won't say what it is. I won't... You never ask a lady's age. But I met her, I think, eight years ago. And boy, has it been a roller coaster over the last eight years. Some really awesome high highs. And some fairly challenging lows. But overall, it's brought me here. And I think we never know where our path will lead us and where the, uh, 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 you know, what will come out of the challenges we face as an individual or as a couple or as a family. Uh, I think we run into challenges at times and hopefully it teaches us something about ourselves and also hopefully teaches us uh, something about our relationship and about love and about family and about home and about a bunch of good things. And we've had a more of our, more than our share of struggles. Uh, but we've also had more than our share of joy and happiness and good times and love and trick or treating and pumpkin pie and <laughs> times at the pool and, uh, uh, a uh, good time. So without further ado, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Anne Marie. Happy birthday to you and many more. I love you, Anne-Marie. You're my partner. You're my wife. You're my soulmate. You're my friend. You know, it's funny. While going through that, all of those words mean something. Uh, but the word that I used to describe her uh, that almost made me tear up more than anything is when I called her my friend. Uh, because despite the troubles and the struggles that all couples have, uh, she's my friend. And uh, I'm her friend. And uh, yeah, so uh, happy birthday, Anne Marie. I didn't bring out a candle. <laughs> didn't bring out a candle. Anne Marie, that's Anne Marie's fault. That's Anne Marie's fault because she's also my key grip. She gets no break on her birthday. She gets no break on her birthday. She has to <laughs> set up the house. Tend to the kids, bring the dog in. I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know what our day looks like. Again, I'm hoping to get some time in cleaning on our birthday uh, so I can uh, make the house presentable. I call it Kenny standards. Uh, I'm not a clean freak uh, and I'm not whatever, but I have certain standards. And when my space violates my standards, I go to work. I like to imagine myself with a cape and a hat. I don't know what the hat would say on it. Uh, I, I don't know what my hat would say on it, but it would say something. And I'd go to work, I'd clean up the house, and she'd be in a bath with lots of bubbles and maybe some candles. And I don't know, she doesn't really drink much wine anymore, but drinking some wine and relaxing and the world would be quiet. But it is hard to do because, again, we are parents of five uh, uh, beautiful children. And if I'm cleaning, that means the babies are with her. And I don't know what is easier to do. And we've debated this. We've debated this. Which is easier, to clean the house or to tend to the babies? Because we got two little ones. God blessed us with two little ones. And a uh, uh, one-year-old, a beautiful girl named Eve, and a beautiful boy uh, uh, named Augie. And they're one and they're two and a half. And they love their mama. And they love their data. Uh, I think they're both, I mean, I think they love us both equally. I like to think equally, but I'll tell you what, when mama leaves the room, they go to the baby gate and my little one Eve, who's the most beautiful little angel will look through the gate and go, ah! Ah! she can have the most hideous screams of pain and, uh, I don't know, needs her mama and nothing comforts her like her mama picking her up and walking her around. I think she wants to grow up just like her mama. Beautiful and talented and funny and uh, sweet and yeah. And uh, she gets to be carried around by her mama and uh, her mama can do more with one hand and a baby in her other arm uh, than I can. <laughs> and you should have seen her going this morning. Uh, getting my room ready. Okay. We gotta, uh, okay, we'll talk about Halloween. I wanna, I got a little guy here that wants to say hi, that wants to get a little, uh, extra love, uh, for his costume that his mama made, that his mama made. Augie's favorite show is, uh, Sesame Street, is Elmo. And, uh, he, uh, his favorite character on Sesame Street is Cookie Monster. And uh, we, uh, uh, it was a cold day here in Naperville and we did some trick-or-treating and it was, well, Eve was born on the 15th last year. So she was a little young for trick-or-treating. So it was really their first uh, real Halloween uh, where they're out and trick-or-treating and uh, their mama made two uh, beautiful, beautiful costumes for them. We've got Cookie Monster here, and uh, his sister was dressed up as Elmo in the same red, not the same, but a red uh, sweatsuit with two eyes, and then Elmo knows for anybody knows, that knows it. And uh, uh, can you do a Cookie Monster? Somebody wants to know how Cookie Monster talks. Can you go, ba 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 he can't, he won't yeah, do it. Shy. He's a little shy, uh, but he's loving on his dad and that feels pretty nice. I don't ever want. Yeah, there he goes, do it again. Ba, 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 ba. Can you do it, Cookie Monster? Can you, what does Cookie Monster say? What does Cookie Monster say when he's eating cookies? Ba, 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 ba. And uh, yeah, no, he was Cookie Monster and his sister was Elmo and we pushed him in the stroller and dad carried two bags and went up to the door and shook the families down for candy for the babies, also known as me. And, uh, but they were super cute and I was super proud and I would ask everyone, hey, do you know who these two are? And some of them would look at them going, well, no, I don't know who those babies are. And I go, I mean the costumes. And they'd go, most often we'd have them say, we had a few people go, Ernie and Bert. And obviously, this guy's not Ernie or Bert. Uh, but they knew the show, and they couldn't place the names, and maybe they didn't have little ones like I do at home. So uh, 
Uh, just wanted to share you uh, what Cookie Monster looked like and uh, his googly eyes and uh, he's the sweetest little thing and he wanted to get in his Cookie Monster outfit. Can you do the Cookie Monster noise one night? Ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba, ba. No, he doesn't want to do the Cookie no Monster noise. Oh, he's doing it kind of quietly. He's moving his mouth without saying the noise, which is just as well because he's got Pop-Tarts in his mouth. Ba, 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 ba. But anyway, I'm gonna uh, give him back, and talk a little longer, drink a little more coffee. But that's, uh, we had a great time on Halloween. I had a great time. Uh, I wasn't feeling it most of the day. Uh, I had a lot on my mind. I'm 55 years old, so maybe most 55 year olds aren't really feeling Halloween. But the kids got home and uh, started getting excited and started remembering uh, Thank you so much for following the creator, Sparky Gal, and I missed somebody else, Jerry Wayne. Thank you so much for following the creator. I've been doing this show. Uh, it'll be two years on November 16th. Uh, been over. Hello, music loving mom. You just missed my son, Augie. He was really cute. Um, I've been doing this show just about two years, and my audience grows every day, and we're clawing our way to 10,000 viewers on TikTok and 2,000 viewers on YouTube and a thousand viewers on Instagram, and I think we're probably gonna hit them all on the same day. And uh, uh, yeah, he was super adorable. Is he there? Well, I feel bad, you missed him, because he was wearing his costume uh, that he had on uh, yesterday as Cookie Monster, and he was super cute, and he was super cuddly. I was trying to get him to make the Cookie Monster noise, which he goes, ba, 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 ba. And uh, he wasn't, he was just cuddling with his dad. And, uh, um, but I had a great time and we were out for, I don't know, we were pushing one of our double strollers and we got a good amount of candy and, uh, I mean, more candy than we need. Uh, ridiculous. I was, you know, over the last three days, I discovered where our chocolate was and it was hidden in the drawer closest to my, where I sleep. And, uh, I don't know. Three nights in a row, I found my way breaking into the drawer. And when I say breaking in, it really didn't require any serious lock picking or anything. It just took me opening the drawer. Uh, but I opened the drawer and I grabbed three. The candy bars are so small these days. They're so small these days. And uh, so I'd grab three. But then I'd go back and grab three more. And then I'd grab six. And all of a sudden, I'd have this huge pile of wrappers. And I was hoping they'd all be gone. They're not all gone. We've got more candy than we ever started with, uh, which is problematic. Kids these days, kids these days, they get so much sweets and so many treats in life, I think they almost take Halloween for granted. When I was a kid, not only did I walk up, walk both ways to school uphill and in the snow and six miles to school, uh, but we also didn't get all the sweets and junk food the kids get these days. So when Halloween rolled around, we really appreciated it. And we would go out for hours and we'd fill up a huge pillow bag. and It was almost grotesque. It was almost grotesque. But uh, well, 13 pounds, that's a nice take of candy. But... Uh, in your little yes, Matt, my little. I did, if I would have had a little brother, he would have been on my back. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, no, I think they almost take candy for granted. And I know we had a great time. Uh, we were out for probably forty minutes with my wife and my two babies and my uh, uh, stepson William. And it was cold, and the babies. It was cold. Uh, but my wife and the babies went back in and William and I went out for another maybe 30, 45 minutes to score some more candy. And uh, we did and had fun. Uh, we had fun. We had a great time. And it brought back so many memories of uh, uh, so many memories of doing it as a kid and uh, running from house to house and uh, just having fun doing it. And when we got back, William and I watched, and I talked about it earlier, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. I'd say a, for anyone looking to see a kind of scary-ish movie with their kids, uh, I would say it was a good movie for William. He's nine. It might have been a little... Uh, good morning, Brian. It might have been a little scary for your nine-year-old, but uh, William's the one that suggested it. I was hoping to watch Halloween. 
But I enjoyed watching it. It was a neat movie, and it was a perfect way to wrap up a uh, uh, perfect uh, Halloween. And we had a great time and got lots of candy. Can I complain to you one moment? All afternoon, we I think trick-or-treating officially started at 4 o'clock. Let me drink some coffee. It's cool enough. All afternoon, I worked out deals with the kids saying, I get all the Almond Joys. I get all the Almond Joys at the end of the day. Because Almond Joys is the best candy. It's got the coconut. It's got the almond, so you feel it's healthy for you. And I think it's either got milk or dark chocolate. I don't know which one on top. And I uh, we went out, and every door I was checking to see what candy they were given. I did not see one Almond Joy being given out all night. William, actually at one door, asked him, do you have any Almond Joy? And although I was embarrassed because I, I mean, I don't want to say it was rude, but again, you know, <laughs> you don't get to pick which candy you want. Uh, oh yeah, peanut butter cups are good. Yeah, but William asked, do you have any Almond Joy? I was a little embarrassed, but a little proud that he was working so hard for uh, me. Cause, and I kept saying, where's the Almond Joy? And he goes, were you born in the 1920s? Nobody eats Almond Joy anymore. I don't know why he picked the 1920s. And I don't know why he thinks nobody eats Almond Joy anymore. Hey, Shannon, have a great day. Uh, but boy, I love the Almond Joy. And apparently it's a really old man's candy because William thought it came from the 1920s. The Roaring Twenties. The Great Gatsby used to eat a lot of Almond Joy, apparently. Uh, <laughs> uh, I do too. And there was not one, not one. Next year, I'm gonna be in charge of the candy that we buy. And not that I want that role, but I do wanna make sure that the kids of Naperville all learn the beauty that is the Almond Joy. But uh, anyway, it's about 8.35 and it's Anne Marie's birthday and it's the day after Halloween and it's November 1st and we've got snow on the grass outside that I can see and I got babies crying in the other room against the gate. I think she probably wants her data and I'm excited to go love on my babies and love on Anne-Marie and enjoy the day and stay warm and maybe edit some videos. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. We don't take days off. Captain Kenny also likes Kit Kat. Why wouldn't Captain Kenny like Kit Kat? They're delicious. Um, we don't take days off from editing and we're gonna post some shorts and post some reels and post some TikToks and have some fun and stay warm and hopefully I'll get a chance to clean up the house so it's up to Kenny's standards and we're gonna uh, enjoy the day and enjoy our coffee and hopefully enjoy each other and the kids and maybe I'll get some I'll go into the candy this morning. I've yet to have a piece. I've yet to have a piece. And uh, I'm looking forward to my day and I'm hoping you're looking forward to your day as well. Uh, hope you had a great Thanksgiving. It's Wednesday morning. Hope your week's going well. Uh, hope you're feeling good. Uh, hope you are uh, uh, loving yourself. Uh, hope you are uh, uh, had a great night's sleep. And I uh, uh, hope you're forgiving yourself. And as always, uh, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.